This new deck from March of the Machine are insane. One plays creatures for free, the other sacrifice them like there's no tomorrow, and the last one has at least three infinite combos in it. First up, we got Cobble Storm, from Ornithopter to Perexion Walker to Halo Hopper. All these creatures can hit the battlefield without spending a single mana. With it, you can quickly overwhelm your opponents in card advantage and surprise them with an unexpected finisher like Rites of Initiation. This deck is a true storm of creatures, and it's gonna catch your opponents by surprise guarantee. In round 1, I play against Walls combo and kept a no land hand since all my creatures are free to cast. I was able to play 4 creatures in one turn and pass the turn. Unfortunately, the opponent was not falling short either and resolved 3 more spells by turn 2. I played a few more creatures and passed, planning to play a shard discovery next turn and start attacking with my frogs. As planned, I drew 3 more cards in my turn but I drew a land and a land grant which set me back 2 turns. With a board full of combo pieces, my opponent found the missing ones and won game number 1. For game number 2, I added 2 more win conditions to the main deck and a couple of fire orders to disrupt their combo. I had a keepable hand with 2 creatures and with the tier 3 creature I could cast a meeting of mine for just 1 mere mana and use a land grant to torture for an extra land to trim our deck. As turns passed, I kept drawing more cards and my plan was to play as many creatures as possible. Since with 2 might of masses and enough creatures, I could attack with everything and pump the ones that remained unblocked. My opponent didn't care to block and I made 2 giant creatures that finished this game in mere seconds. In game 3, I decided to keep a very good hand that contains a fair amount of creatures and a solid card spell. However, my opponent flooded the board again. The difference now is that I got a turn 5 kill if they don't block. This means that my opponent only has one turn to win the game. And as it is right now, they have just from 3 to 4 mana to work with and no combo pieces in play. I untap and quickly cast Rites of Initiation to steal the match. Next up we got Swarm Combo. And let me tell you, this deck is crazy in a whole different way. Ever thought Sprout Swarm could be a game changer? Well, it is. When you combine it with creatures like Nell Sentinel, Thermo Alchemist, and Hunger Scrounger, you can create an infinite talking army and instant speed, dealing infinite damage and generating infinite colorless mana. Sometimes all at once. Trust me, this deck is a wild ride, and you got to see it in action. As I described, this deck is insane. However, setting up and getting the kill may take a couple of turns. You either need a combination of 4 creatures that on tap or 3 plus an Archeomancer and as you can see now, we already got the creatures we need in hand. So it's just a matter of us finding our win condition. To achieve this, we will rely on country spells like Mana Morphos or Karameter's Favor to search for them. And what's cool about it is that it turns our creatures into Mana Lords that on tap whenever we cast other spells. This is why I decided to cast a no value word storm to just on tap or needle sentinels to be able to cast a reckless impulse that reveal a Thermo Alchemist. This is huge as now I have infinite damage if I find a Sprout Swarm. And at worst, we can just try and ping them for a bunch every turn. Despite our opponent having access to all mana in the world, this deck surprise factor is essential and tapping out against it is bad news. We found our missing combo piece and now this is where the magic starts. I will play a Sprout Swarm, untap all my creatures and then ping them for one with Thermo Alchemist. Then I replay re Sprout Swarm. Untapping my creatures, pinging them again, and you know where this is going. Infinite damage and infinite creatures by turn 5. This is somewhat hard to pull on NTO, but I can guarantee you, it's way faster in real life. Anyways, let's move to our game number 2. For Cyborg, we bring the Pyroblast and Warp in Vigor to disrupt their plants and protect our creatures if they get in their fiery cannonades. We are a bit flooded, but we will be okay as long as we hit our combo pieces and, as it is right now, we only need a couple of untapped creatures to go infinite with Sprout Swarm. They tried to control my spell, but I was ready for it with my Pyroblast. Still, it's a difficult spot because I have 3 dead cards in hand while they have access to all the mana and 6 cards at their disposal. Just remember that I should have sighted out one of the Weather Storm. This may seem like not a big deal, but considering how our hand currently looks, it's almost a deadly mistake. They found a way to deal with the gambling, and on top of that, they also found a counter for my Proud Swarm, putting us 40 behind. A few more turns passed, and without any resources left, I conceded the game. In the last game, I kept a decent hand if I could find a second land, but since I didn't want to take any risks, I decided to keep it. This did not punish me, as I was able to find another land and add another creature to the board. Now, the plan is to keep hitting our land drops while assembling our combos sooner rather than later. Being on the play against this deck is usually very good, and despite them countering my Thermo Alchemist, I can resolve a reckless impulse effect and find the rest of our combo pieces. At the end of the day, two cards are better than one, and I found two combo pieces from it. They play the Mold Drifter and pass, and I just play my creature and pass back. 
My opponent seems to be stuck on color mana, so I decided it was an excellent idea to deny them from more card draw by countering their card draw spell. Also, I dealt some incidental damage with the Gremlin to close the instances even more while adding more bodies to the field. With the Thermo Alchemist effect at hand, I kept in their life points by chaining multiple instant and sorceries spells at a turn, and eventually I found a makeshift munitions. This is huge, as I can create enough tokens to close the game next turn. They couldn't find a second color source and lost the game. Last but not least, we got Mono Black Sacrifice, also known as 8 Rides. This aggressive deck lets you sacrifice lesser creatures like Nested Shambler and Shambling Gust to fill powerful cards like Carrion Feeder and Mortician Beetle. And boy, does this pack a punch. It's one of my personal favorites, and it's definitely worth trying out if you're looking for a deck that's both fun and powerful. We're up against a fierce opponent with a mono black burn deck. They are known for using quick and cheap black spells to deal damage, and their unblockable creatures are a constant threat every turn. In this game, we got a solid strategy. We can afford to keep one land hand because our deck is packed with almost 30 wonder cards, and we got some amazing card draw spells like Corrupted Conviction and Village Rites to keep us in the game. By now, it's a race to see who can deal damage faster, but we'll manage to gain an advantage and have a better board presence than our opponent. We are flooding the board with creatures and dealing massive amounts of damage every turn. We even manage to remove their only attacker, and leaving them defenseless. Our opponent is struggling to find an answer to our threat, and it looks like the victory is within our reach. We quickly won game number one, and things are looking promising for us. We are sticking with the same deck after cyberding. We got a plan in mind, and we are ready to execute it. At the start of the game, we play our early creatures to get some value out of them later. Our Mortician Beetle and Gixian Infiltrator benefit the most from the sacrifice effects, so we need to get them on the battlefield as quickly as possible as well. We use for removal spells to trade creatures with our opponent, but we are herring resources. That means if this turns into a long battle of attrition, we'll come out on top easily. However, we need to be careful. Even though we have a strong board presence, our life total is already low. A few burn spells from our opponent could take us out in no time. That's why we are putting the pressure on our opponent's life total as fast as we can. Our Gixian Infiltrator is doing an amazing job of growing turn to turn. It benefits not only from creatures getting sacrificed, but also from other permanents. In just one turn, it's become a 7 power creature that threatens to end the game in the next turn. Our opponent is running out of steam, and we are taking advantage of that. We won the first match easily, as we are feeling confident heading into the next one. Now, if you are new to Pauper and want to test other cool decks, click into that playlist. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.